Good morning everybody. Unless of course you're watching this video in the evening, in that case good evening and you're watching Time Travel TV and today we're going to be talking about the ontological argument. Now, the ontological the get it right. The ontological argument was developed by a chap called Anselm who wished to prove the existence of God. And he basically said that God is really great. He's not just really great, he is the greatest possible thing that can be conceived. Nothing is greater than this chap called God. Now, he then went on to say that things can only either exist in your imagination or in reality. And he said that things that exist in reality are generally better than things that just exist in your imagination. I mean, unicorns are pretty cool, but wouldn't they be better if they were real? Coincidentally, unicorns do not exist. I know many of you will argue to beg to differ, but unicorns definitely do not exist. I mean, not like how wombles exist. Wombles do exist, but unicorns don't exist at all. So, he said that, therefore, God must exist. Because if he doesn't exist, he won't be the greatest thing ever. Something else will. Like, I know I might be the greatest thing ever, uh, which many of you will probably agree with me. Anyway, he said that God therefore must exist by definition. His existence is necessary for... Necessary. Anyway, he thought he'd cracked it, and many of you are probably watching this video thinking, wow, I've never thought of it like that, or that something wrong with that argument. I, there's something... yeah, that, that is not quite right. And if you're thinking that, you are not alone. A chap called Gal Nilo, sorry if I got that pronunciation incorrect, but if you saw it written down, you would see my difficulty. Uh, but he called him Gal Nilo for the time being. Gal Nilo said that he can use that argument to prove anything he wanted, so he used the uh, um, uh, desert island. He said this desert island is the best desert island ever, and therefore it must exist, otherwise it won't be the best desert island ever. Uh, but it doesn't exist because I just thought of it. So I can use it to argue whatever I want. I can uh, use it to argue the existence of unicorns if I want. Or wombles, which will be a futile um, experiment because wombles do exist. We, I mean, they've written books about them, they've made a TV series about them, made a film about them, we made their own pop band. I mean, what more proof do you need about the existence of wombles? Anyway. So. And not only that, he was not alone. Many other later philosophers agreed with this chap down neat dap. Gaunilu. For instance, Immanuel Kant. He says that just because things exist in by definition doesn't mean they necessarily exist in reality. He's only managed to prove he exists in a dictionary. He says that existence is not a real predicate. Bertram Russell then says agrees with him. He says that yes. Existence is not a genuine predecessor. You can say that Bill laughs, you can say that Jesus saves, you can say that God exists. Doesn't mean he necessarily exists, because existence is not a predicate. Predecessor. Then the chap called Frege came along and said, went one further. He agreed with them, but he said that existence ain't really a big deal, to be fair. He said that there are some things in this world to which the concept could be confirmed could concept could be referred to. You can take a lion, for example, but you can't say that lion has a special existing quality. Uh, you can say you can say that there is such thing as a lion, but you can't say that it has a quality called existence. Richard Dawkins didn't agree with this argument, but to be fair, does he agree with anything? He says it's infantile. David Hume calls it a failure. And if that's not enough, Gas King comes along and says that, to be honest, this argument is so bad, he can use it to prove the fact that God doesn't exist. And he turns it right on his head, and he does. So, Gal Nilo didn't, wasn't convinced, Kant wasn't convinced, Russell wasn't convinced, Frege wasn't convinced, Dawkins wasn't convinced. Hume wasn't convinced, and Gaskin wasn't convinced, and to be fair, I'm not convinced. So on that happy note, cheerio!